Ready? Yeah. What's up, guys? guys. It's your boys. Yeah. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> All right, guys, it is episode two of CSM Sundays, and we have some new content for you each week that we're gonna be putting out on the YouTube channel, so make sure you're checking it. This is gonna be our second episode. As of right now, we are still canceled in the building until March 28th, and so as of right now, all those activities are canceled. Keep checking the website, make sure you're staying up to date. We'll put out any new information that we have for you. Yeah, so we're gonna send out an email to you every week that's gonna include this video. It's gonna have some discussion questions, and just any other information that you need. But we would love your content. We wanna get you as students involved. So if you have any ideas or anything you wanna put in this video, whether it's related to the Roman series or just something fun or something creative, let us know. You can DM us on Instagram or email myself or Alex. Hashtag everything is content. Everything is content. We'd love to get you guys involved in our CSM Sundays video. So we're still trying to figure out exactly what we want this to look like, but we know every week when we're gonna have some kind of teaching, uh, right now, especially in our Roman series, we want to get some stuff from you guys, even just some fun things to almost take what a normal Sunday morning in CSM looks like, condense it down into one video that you can watch at home, watch with your family, and watch together as a student group, and yeah, be able to discuss and learn together. <laughs> Hey there CSM, today is a very important day in church history. It's St. Patrick's Day. It's the day we celebrate Patrick, who uh, was an amazing guy. You'll want to do your research on him, look him up on Wikipedia. Um, an incredible story. He was taken as a slave to Ireland. He then drafted- it's To set up my trap to hunt and locate a leprechaun. You can see right now I'm wearing green pants and a green shirt. Um, so that means I am mostly invisible to the leprechaun, and that's actually why we wear green on St. Patrick's Day. They don't want the leprechauns to be spooked, and we don't want to spook them, so it's like a mutual agreement. Oh, candy! Oh, no, 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 candy! He got away from me, guys. Um, the leprechaun got away. Yeah, guys, so we are in Romans 8 this week. Make sure you're continuing with the reading plan uh, and all of the content that we're creating for you. We're going to see from uh, some students as they read for us uh, this week's passage. So take it away. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by flesh could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemns sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the spirit, if you have the spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Christ who dwells in you. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things who will bring us, who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is that he condemns? Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who is raised to life, 
is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love that God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. There you go. We This week, as we continue our Romans series, we are in Romans chapter 8. Some people have even called Romans chapter 8 the greatest chapter in the entire Bible. But before we jump into Romans chapter 8, we need to look at the end of chapter 7, because this is going to give us some huge insight in what we're going to be talking about today. Romans chapter 7 ends like this, with Paul writing about himself, and Paul's wrestling with the fact that he knows what the right thing is to do, but he just keeps messing up over and over again. And so he says in verse 24, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? And I don't know if any of you have ever been there before. I'm sure you have times in your life where you just feel like I'm such a loser. Like I can't get my, I just can't get my life together. I keep messing up over and over again. I know what the right thing is to do, but I just can't seem to do it. And that's where Paul is at at the end of Romans chapter seven. And then he comes to Romans chapter 8. And for me, this verse, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, is life-changing to me. When I was in 11th grade, uh, I had struggled my entire life. I accepted Christ as my Savior at a young age, um, but I was a missionary kid. My parents were missionaries. My dad was a pastor. And so I spent so much of my life just trying to live up to the fact that I needed to be like an example of what a Christian was. And so every time I would sin, every time I would mess up, I would just like beat myself up and just be like, I'm such a loser, I'm so worthless. God would never love me. God doesn't like me. I mean, I read in the Bible, like saying the songs, Jesus loves me, but I, I never felt that way. I always felt like God was condemning me, that he was looking down at me, that that he just, he just didn't like me because of this, what a sinful, evil person I was. And then I remember so clearly sitting in my room in 11th grade and I opened up my Bible and I read Romans chapter 8 verse 1 and it hit me for the first time ever in my life. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says this, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Those words just hit me that there's no condemnation. God does not condemn me because of what Jesus did and what Paul says at the end of chapter 7, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. And even while that's happening, that there's this battle between my spirit and my sin, that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It's because I'm in Christ Jesus, God doesn't condemn me. He forgives my sins, not just in the past, not just in the present, but even in the future. And there's nothing I could do that could make God love me any more. And there's nothing I could do that could make God love me any less. Once I realized that, I was finally free for the first time to live for Christ and to follow God, not out of obligation, not because I was afraid he was going to hate me if I messed up, but I could just be free and I could live life through the power of the Holy Spirit and just serve God, love others in that freedom knowing that there was no condemnation. It took all the pressure off. And that's an amazing, amazing thing. And that's what Paul talks about uh, from verse 2 down to verse 11, that we now have the Holy Spirit, and we need to live in that Spirit, walk in that Spirit. We make decisions by the power of that Spirit of how we live our life, that we are no longer defined by our sin and by our flesh, that we, we're not controlled by that anymore, but now there's no condemnation, and we're free to live for God, to love others, and to just follow after him without the fear of him hating us just because we messed up. There is no condemnation if you are in Christ Jesus. All throughout Romans 8, Paul's telling us all the different ways that we are blessed. And so he lists different ones. If you're looking through your Bible, you're opening it to Romans 8. Look from verse 12 on through the end. He lists different ones like children of God that we get to call God our Abba or our Father. 
that we are heirs of God with Christ. That the Spirit uh, that helps us in our weakness, that the Spirit intercedes for us, meaning that he's almost, he's crying out to God on our behalf, that we are justified, that we are glorified, that God is for us. And even that Christ intercedes for us. So we have both the Holy Spirit and Christ interceding on our behalf to God, crying out for things that we don't even know we need God's help for. And so all these different ways that God is blessing us, and we can read those throughout this passage. Look down at your Bibles at verse 18. It says this, For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory of that is to be revealed to us. The suffering of our current time, what would you say that is? Whether it's things that are being canceled or if you're suffering from anxiety or depression and now you're left in isolation, what are the things that are taking place and everybody has them? But here's what this verse is saying, that the suffering of this present time is not even worth comparing to the glory of who God is and what our futures hold with God. I want you to look down at verse 37 and 38. These are the, the two that really hit home for this passage and kind of wrap it all up. Verse 37. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors, through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's a lot of different things listed there, and you could even say one of those things would be, nor the coronavirus can keep us and separate us from the love of God. We're told to be separate and to isolate ourselves in social distancing, but no matter what, all of that can't separate us from the love of God. What are the blessings that you have in your life right now? Do you have a hard time believing this passage? That God's blessing us in so many different ways and maybe right now it's hard to see those blessings. I wanna encourage you, our church is being mobilized. That you as a student are being mobilized, meaning that we're not meeting here in this building anymore, but we are still the church and we're still functioning as the church. Are you equipped to be able to be a self feeder, to grow in your walk with God and also to reach others even though you may not have a home for you to grow right now. I want to encourage you, take those steps. Start trying to reach out to some people and be the church. Be the hands and the feet of Christ and show other people the love that he has shown us. All throughout Romans 8, we've gotten to see how there is no condemnation and that we are more than conquerors, that God has blessed us in so many different ways and that nothing can separate us from his love. We just got done looking at Romans chapter 8. What an amazing chapter. I want to encourage you, if you haven't already, sit down, take time, read through it yourself, process through it. But what is one truth from Romans chapter 8 that you're going to take with you? Maybe it's that uh, there's no condemnation or you're more than conqueror or nothing can separate you from God's love. Maybe it's one of those lists of truths and blessings. We want to challenge you, write that down, whether it's on a post-it note or in your journal or maybe make a cool graphic or some kind of artwork and put that somewhere where you can see it that for the rest of this week for the next month or however long that you're constantly reminded of that truth from romans chapter 8 of who you are and how you've been blessed i also want to encourage you guys take time to recognize that there is nothing that is happening in your life no suffering that can take place of god's love that there's nothing that separates us from god's love and that he is with us no matter what. And even in this time right now, I would encourage you, lean on that. Lean on the understanding that nothing in your life can separate you from God's love. What an incredible truth, even for right now. As we send this out uh, in the email that we're going to send it with, there's going to be some discussion questions there for you to go through with your student group. Go through them as a family. Um, we would love for you guys to engage with this. Don't forget the reading plans that we're going to keep posting. So read along with us. Um, and we're excited as we continue going through the book of Romans. That's all we have for you today. Hopefully you're staying connected with your group. We're excited to see how God's working in such a strange and unique time. Yeah, we love it. And if you have any suggestions for any of these videos, make sure you let us know. But that's a wrap for this one.